it's not often you come across something like this in the middle of the city. This is Footscray High School's The Farm, and it is a place of award-winning gardens and programs. And I know you're gonna to wanna to join me as I find out what they're growing. Jamie, this is stacks of food. Yes. What, what happens to it from here? Um, most of the time, students take a lot of it home. We also give it to staff, um, anybody who wants it really. And we also give it to our canteen uh, sometimes because they make food with it. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. And I see the scales. Do you like weigh it? Is there, like, do you have a record of what you grow? Yes, so we have a spreadsheet um, and we're recording all the weight of the produce that we grow here. Uh, so far we're at like 160 kilos. Oh wow. It's going strong for the year. And so do you take stuff home yourself? Of course. Um, I've been taking a lot of zucchinis home. <laughs> running out of ideas of what to do with them. Well, it's such an impressive haul, and I imagine that it makes, you know, it's great for all of you guys, but it must be nice to, to let other people go home with your beautiful produce too. Yeah, given to other people. Fills your soul. <laughs> what we're going to start with here is the Angophora, and this is um, a prime example of how you tell an Angophora from a Crimea or a Eucalyptus. Jack Dunstan, a former Footscray High student turned teacher, runs the course at the school's sustainability centre, otherwise known as the farm. It's an acre site. Um, we're in the industrial west of Footscray, um, west of Melbourne, and it's dedicated to, to horticulture. So it was set up in the 80s as a space for students from the west to come to learn you know, the fundamental skills of gardening. So you'll see that all the gardens here have been established over you know, 45 years uh, by students. So quite a unique thing for a school in an inner city suburb to have a, a space that's just dedicated towards, towards horticulture, yeah. Hey, what are you guys up to here? We're just propagating some ruby saltbush to for the community and for our garden. Ah, so what do you do? You prep the cuttings first? Yeah, so we get some plant material that we've earlier harvested and then these guys are just um, cutting it up into little bits that can then be put into tube stock. And then what happens in here? Um, in here, um, there's the same thing happening. There's people propagating some more plants. So, oh, this is Goodenia, yeah? Yeah, these are Goodenia ovatas that we've done a while ago. And they've been situated in the hot house for a little while. So we're acclimatising them slowly and they'll get put in the shade house. And lots of it goes back into Footscray Gardens as well. So we actually take plant materials. So a lot of like salvias, like salvia leucantha and salvia microphylla and stuff like that. We kind of take from Footscray Gardens and then reintroduce back when they need them. So it's yeah, very tied into community. Well, let's have a let's have a go. You've been doing lots of different things in horticulture, Elizabeth. Like, is it something that you see yourself doing for a job? Yeah, definitely. I'd love to get into horticulture one day. Um, I love both the practical and the academic elements of it. So I'd like to do a mix, go into like plant science or something like that. But also still have practical application of what I do because I love getting out in the garden. All right, we better get on with this. There's a few cuttings to take. Yep. Because we offer this project, we've got students that have gone on to work in the botanic gardens, they're, they're qualified arborists, they've worked at the zoo, landscape conservation. So there's lots of different avenues that students have got into. And through offering, you know, a, um, a program that allows students to connect with lots of different aspects of horticulture, um, you know, it's, it's a really, really nice thing. Welcome to the Hydro Pond. Yeah, do you show me? Oh, this is fantastic. You've got so much going on here, but this looks pretty high tech. Yeah, it's um, a bit of new age technology on the farm. So we use it to try and conserve as much space and get as much out of the area as we can. In the city, I guess that's something that everyone's considering. They look pretty healthy. I'll be proud of these. Yeah, no, they look pretty impressive. They're something you'd be happy to see in the supermarket. We've got 125 lettuces growing. So that's a very efficient use of our space. And so what's happening with this system is we've got water from that drum running all the way along up to those pipes down at the end, and it just moves the nutrients through the plants and their roots are sitting in the water. Within uh, all, 
bind together here and they're not oh, wow. together absorbing the nutrients. So how long does it take to, to get a mature crop out of this? Well, uh, here is a lot more efficient than using a basic garden bed due to uh, the usual cos lettuce would take about 11 weeks in a garden bed and would require more maintenance, but this you can kind of leave it to its own devices and it'd take about eight weeks to be produced. Yeah, it's such an interesting way to grow and I imagine like you get to watch the plants so intimately too, you must learn a lot about them. Yeah, yeah for sure. Watching them grow is incredibly important for us, especially when it comes to our learning. Watching the stages of development in plants is part of our learning, so it's really great to have them here and being able to actually see them grow. The students are actually doing a, a certificate in horticulture, so it's a hands-on class as well. So that's another different aspect to the, the course that we run. So it's not about sitting an exam, it's about can they do a certain aspect of horticulture um, and can they do a certain aspect of gardening and um, be competent in that. Ollie, oh, this is such a great setup. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, beautiful wall of tools. And I hear you're the guy that everyone comes to when something goes wrong. It tends to end up like that. And how did that happen? Uh, just started doing a bit of work here for Jack and then it just led to me doing horticulture here as a subject and coming over on Thursdays and doing work. And you do a lot of the maintenance around the property too. Is that is that right? It's you guys who have to look after the place? Yeah, our students, I get to do a, a bit more than other students because of my extra time here. And so what sort of tasks do you do when you're looking after the place? Mow, whip a snip, fix it, tools, hand equipment, that kind of just basic little bits and bobs around. And is horticulture something that you think will be part of your future when you yeah, leave school? definitely, yeah. So what do you want to do? Arbiculture. Right. Yeah, want to climb trees, that'd be good fun. Why not? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you must feel proud of this achievement that you've all I mean you've done it but you've all done it together all of the different students that have come through yeah, since you I took mean, the program the, over. Yeah yeah I, I am really proud and I kind of see it as a you know a custodian of the the space to make sure it goes into the future mm -hmm. and I think the students do as well so that's why you get this you know this amazing thing where students actually volunteer to come over at lunch or they spend whole days here just you know deadheading or whatever because they see it as a way to continue this space for future generations. And that really makes me so proud that, you know, I might not be here forever, but the space will be. And that's a, that's a, that's a really comforting thing.